Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. Tonight's target is going to be NGC 7331, sometimes called the Dalek Galaxy, in fact more commonly known as that. But I'm also going to try and frame in that same picture another nearby cluster of galaxies called Stefan's Quintet. Let's see how it goes. So tonight is really my only chance to do any astrophotography this week and it's just really down to the weather, it's going to be the only clear night so I want to make the absolute most of it. Lucky for me, actually there's no moon at all in the sky tonight, but it is set to perhaps cloud out by around about 2am if the weather forecast doesn't change. I'm not yet sure how long I'll be able to stay on this target before I actually start to lose it in the neighbours roofs, but we'll find all that out as the night progresses. Well, it's been around about an hour now since I put the scope out to start cooling. I've had a fan running, blowing uh, cool air over that primary mirror, so it should have been close to ambient, and I'm about ready to start my imaging session. There's one thing that I want to do and make sure of before I actually get my target framed up, and that's to make sure that I'm shooting at 90 degrees sensor rotation. I've done a lot of my shooting lately with it set to zero degrees, but I'm going to have to change it now to make sure I get both of these galaxies, or indeed the clusters, uh, in the same shot. So we'll talk a little bit more over on the screen now about how you can make sure of your rotation setting when using an ASI Air. Okay, so I've just told the scope to slew to NGC 7331, as I knew that it'd find that and center it quite easily. There it is, that's the Dalek Galaxy. Now, I mentioned that I wanted to also frame Stefan's Quintet in this same image. So, there's a really cool tool with uh, the ASI that we can use to our advantage to get this framing correct. And that's if we just click on Tools down here, and then hit Annotate. If I just go onto the full viewer, you can see it's already detected some of the background galaxies. But this is the set that I'm really interested in, this little cluster up here. But as it's like put some circles around it to let me know exactly where they are in the frame. Now I know that if I press and hold about midway between those, I can tell the scope, uh, the mount indeed, to go to that set of positions. And it's just going to slew away to that now, reframe it all up to exactly that, and that should put, hopefully, those targets from being kind of offset to something more like there, with a shared position in the centre of the screen. If we just wait for that. So, uh, yeah, looks like it's done a great job of that. I may need to fine-tune it ever so slightly, but if I just annotate it again, you can see it's put the Dalek uh, Galaxy there, and Stefan's Quintet right there. Perhaps I may need to move it just ever so slightly back so I'd do that, but this is all just fine-tuning that you can choose yourself based on targets. Now, once this is done moving, I'm just going to show you how to also use the uh, plate solving function to check your rotation of your camera as well at the same time. So this should be finished in a moment, and it is. And it's moved that to a, quite a nice position now, I think. Now the next thing I want to do is hit plate solve. And it's going to tell me that I'm currently at 88.83 degrees. I wanted to be at 90, but I just eyeballed it up, and that's, you know, it's within 1.17 degrees, so it's plenty, plenty close, <laughs> really. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to continue shooting. But indeed, if you wanted to, and you saw you were miles away, you could just take your camera, rotate it, plate solve again and again until you're happy with the rotation and framing. Alright, so everything's now framed up exactly how I wanted it. I've double checked the rotation and things like that, and it's all just spot on and ready to go. As you can probably tell looking behind me there, the counterweight bar is nearly parallel with the ground. I expect I've got about half an hour before it needs to do a meridian flip, but that's no problem at all as it's going to do an automated one as I'm running this in auto run mode. Um, another great thing it's done is I totally forgot to set my cooling off, so it reminded me of that, so uh, I didn't make a mistake there. Well, I did make a mistake, but it connected for it. It's also done a autofocus right before the uh, imaging plan has begun. It's just finished that right now. and. Uh, It'll do that every one degree of change in temperature throughout the night as I've got a temperature probe plugged into the focuser so it's going to keep a track on things and hopefully keep things as near as perfect as is possible. So 
So we've just hit 9 p.m. and I thought I'd come outside and give you all a little bit of an update on how the night's progressing. I've been keeping an eye on things from inside with my tablet, looking at the frames as they come in. I think we've just finished frame number 18 there. I've got it set to just effectively keep shooting and shooting and shooting those. I'll finish at the end of the night just by taking some fresh flats and some matching bias frames for that. But so far, I have to say it's looking far more promising than I could have hoped. There's been a few passing clouds and things like that, but really nothing that's worried me to the point where I'm thinking, hey, maybe I need to get everything packed inside in a big hurry if it starts to rain. It's just been relatively harmless passing banks of cloud. And uh, for a while now, it's actually been totally clear. I hope that that'll show up on the uh, time lapses that I'm taking to kind of stitch this video together with. Guiding's been going phenomenally well, as usual. I'm starting to get a bit spoiled, I think, by just how good the EQ8 is at that. Uh, and as I mentioned, these frames, they're looking so promising. I think we'll just go take a look at that screen now and we'll talk more about it. All right, so if we take a quick look over here at frame number 20 so far, um, if we just have a quick look at the guiding first, I'll just tap that. As you can see, it's using kind of multi-star guiding tonight and it seems to be working out just fine. I have had lower guide numbers than this, but this is already phenomenally low. So uh, I'm in absolutely no position to complain. Still totally happy with that. If we take a look at the image itself on screen, just by tapping there, if I open up on the Dalek, uh, you can hopefully see, I don't know how well this is going to come up and apologies for having to record the screen in this manner, but it's really all I've got right now. Uh, but hopefully you can see there's some of that faint extension visible there and there's certainly some of the dust lane detail visible right down into the core even on these uh, single five minute frames. Now there's a lot more background galaxies visible and that always just sets my imagination racing as I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, especially galaxies do that to me. But there's the quintet as well, that's also looking extremely promising. Uh, I'm satisfied to say I can even see that at all, I know that they're all quite faint. So this is looking set to be, I would say, my best image of this target by far. Uh, I just hope to see how the rest of the night progresses, really. So three more hours have passed now since the last update and largely nothing has changed. It just ran totally automatically. Um, it's been a very hands-off night tonight. I'd say the temperature has just about maintained, maybe dropped a little bit further as it looks like to maintain zero degrees now. The camera's cooler is just about off nearly all the time. Um, it's kept up with auto focusing as such throughout the night. I've noticed absolutely no problems whatsoever there. So uh, top marks on the ZWO EAF. I'm uh, so happy to have one of those on this scope as well now. I think perhaps my next project, uh, I'll maybe use the Esprit. I I'd like ideally to uh, try out the mono camera on that at some point when Chloe's finished her latest project that she's working on. That'll hopefully feature in, a, uh, in an upcoming video, but yeah, I'd like to try and use that mono camera, I think, again for a little while and just see how that goes on that refractor. Well, if you enjoyed this video and you want to help me out a little bit, then please do consider to leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. It's all going to help me so much in growing this channel, which is something I definitely want to do. I want to keep doing this for a long time, but I'll need your help to keep doing it. So I think that's about it for tonight. I'll just finish by saying until next time, clear skies.